Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. What does Colgate mean by live life to the brightest? Could it be a rich glass of red sipped inside a Parisian cafe on a snowy night when my gaze is met by a tall, mysterious... <coughs> I mean, brushing is directed with Colgate Optic White Pro Series Toothpaste gives you a visibly whiter smile in just three days, so you can live life to the brightest and finish that glass without worrying about teeth stains. Colgate Optic White. Find it at all major retailers. Who's taking care of sick people? Not a sick person herself, but somebody who's taking care of sick people, which is like an anguished, stressed out look on your face. Like you hate life right now, you hate people. Do I look yep. the same to you? I'm having the same thing. No, I was gonna say you look like you could be um uh you could be a lawyer who attends an opening of a joint chiropractic, and then you uh, look at you showing your outfit. I can't read backwards. It, it says looks goodbye, like- Kyle. Oh, oh it does. It's, it's a goodbye, Kyle shirt. Well, you look like a very professional person. You're wearing a blazer. You have your face all gussied up. You've got glasses. You look like a lawyer who'd be at a joint chiropractic opening to inform Mia and her husband that they don't have any money left. Also to inform that... Mia is not the CEO. She's just the chief business officer, which is not the CEO. And that she doesn't know how many chiropractic, what the structure of the thing is. She just knows that she makes $450,000. And I'm not even sure that she knows that she makes $450,000. I think that she's told by Gordon that they make $450,000. She spends like she has $450,000. I just, think that's yeah. the point. I mean, does I mean, she spend? We saw the accommodations. If I, were, if I were told by somebody that, you know, I aspire for that, where I have this supreme confidence of somebody who doesn't know anything, but things can show off that they know everything and spend, has no money, but can spend like they have all the money. I want to feel, I want to know how that feels like, because I'm working my ass off. I have a sick husband. I have a sick dog. I have a child that is in the midst of competition. So I have to drive her everywhere. And right now I'm getting emails from people that work for me, telling me all the stuff that I need to do. So I'm, I don't hold them back. It sucks. Yeah. I also envy the life of a person who just shows up to places and knows things are handled. But right. also, see, I envy that. But at the same time, it's like I'm not sure if I have the, um, but the neurological structure to let things go like that. You don't. Like, no, I yeah. do. Oh, okay. I would love for you, anybody. You know, when we were, I, when I was an active participant in this podcast, <laughs> you knew. I didn't do any of that. The reason our partnership worked so well was because I didn't want to do any of the work. I did. I just wanted to show up for the glory. And the fame. <laughs> and you were anal enough that you couldn't let go of it. And you needed to dot every I and cross every T <laughs> yourself to make sure you were a control freak. And I was just a, you know, fame whore. So this worked out really good. I think that in the Robin Giselle. Until you uh, started telling me to dot the I's and cross the T's. And I was and you like, were like, I don't have time for that. That doesn't work for me. I think that in Robin <laughs> and Giselle's podcast relationship, Robin is definitely the one that shows up. Robin and is the only, definitely she, the one that shows up. She shows up, oh, like and Giselle me. does like the shows work. Up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and just like does the work. Rob, uh, Giselle. Does I don't the work. think Giselle does the work either. It's their whatever their uh, personal assistant now. When do you get a personal assistant? Oh God! I think like now you you've been doing podcasting for two years. Yeah, you need a personal assistant. You need at least a Jacqueline who shows up, asks you for the orders, but takes up for your fights. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I hand her my husband's ball razor. Mm-hmm. No, um, I don't know. I don't know if I would do well with a personal assistant. If it was a Virgo, yes, you would. Yes. If it was a fellow Virgo. Mm-hmm. You know what? No, that's not true. Gary, because there's some people in my life who I'm like, oh, you handle it. You know what's interesting is like I'm such a, a an anal annie when it comes to like all this stuff. But mm-hmm. when it comes to like – like I have friends who throw, as you know, lavish birthday parties. Yeah. Lavish getaways. Lavish can, weekends. You have way too many friends. I cannot I, handle that many people. Right. So they, but so when, whenever that's happening, when there's like a party planning situation, mm-hmm. that is one place where I love to sit back and just be the person that shows up for jokes. I'm like, you yeah. need me here to joke. You, you need me here to show up, take like an hour early, take a shot, and just liven up the mood. Yes. You got it. I can be the life of the party. I could be the life of the party, but I, I don't want to be that. the planner. So that's what I want to be. That's what I do. That's what I bring to the table is I can be the life of the party. I can be the silly one. You can pick on me. I don't take things seriously. And I can. you can either joke at me or laugh at my jokes. Either way, as long as I am, people are laughing around me, I'm pretty happy about it. So, you know, you know I think that that is what Amrit thinks of Vishal. And I think that's why Amrit gets so salty when Vishal doesn't show up to get hammered at his birthday or bachelor party. We'll get to it. I have. A All right, let's get to it first. Let's do family karma first, and then we'll okay. cut to Potomac. Cut to. <laughs> cut to. <laughs> I'm gonna do that so much. <laughs> I can't wait. You know that should be the new way that you interrupt me. Cut to. <laughs> cut to Arthi taking over the conversation. <laughs> That is assuming that I know I'm taking over the conversation. I know. <laughs> Half the time, I'm, in, I'm mid-thought process and I just blurt it out and you're still talking. <laughs> I'm not doing this consciously. <laughs> All right. So uh, family karma this episode, we open back up with Rishi and Monica and Rishi is just s- s- schmoozing Monica into thinking that he's a loyal boyfriend. And it's just such, it's so fake. It's like... Monica, <sighs> you got to run. Yeah, it's not gonna work. And I, um, this is something I don't know. Maybe this is a generalization, but yeah, it's probably a typecast and a generalization. But when I see a Daisy family, especially maybe it's a Daisy thing too. When I see a Daisy family with only boys, yeah, I always worry. <laughs> okay, that the men there haven't been, you know. They are allowed to do things and not really respect women or that they are spoiled and that they will get away with it. They know how to schmooze and they know how to act cute and get away with it. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I've got two boys. And so technically I'm a Daisy family. I I was like, wait a minute. Am I saying something (laughs) Well, you no, know I'm not like but that. But I'm though. looking at Rishi. You know I'm a I'm psychopath. Thinking, I'm looking at Rishi. Yeah. He has two brothers. And in next week's episode, it looks like his dad is sort of agreeing with Rishi. And he's like similar. And that is rubbing Monica the wrong way. Yeah. And I feel like maybe Rishi and his brothers were spoiled. And then they were, hey, you can get away with it by looking cute and acting cute. It's possible. Yeah. I mean, I know I know what that is like. I mean, I I grew up with two brothers and I feel mm-hmm. like my brothers were treated that way. Um, mm-hmm. I was very much not. But at the same time, I you know, my husband is one of two boys who is That's they're true. like the most feminist men I've ever met in my life. The most. I mean, your the brother-in-law. Most. He's like Yeah. I cannot believe I came and visited your family once for one night and I met the whole family. Met every single person. Everybody. And they were all so good. So nice. So sweet. Yeah. My husband's one flaw, his Achilles heel is therapy, which is funny because his brother is a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. that's the only yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. So Rishi tells Monica – that he lied about when he knew that they all knew because he was told by Brian to act like he didn't know that they all knew, but he knew that he didn't know that they didn't. I don't so, know. So this is what Rishi's playing. When you have, when you had different levels of untruths or lies that you said, the best way to throw somebody off is to cop up for cop up to the least harmful of the lies. Yes. And that way the other person thinks that you are being honest because oh, yeah. 
you cop uh, copped up to the lie of, hey, I knew it beforehand. I just didn't want to share it. I thought you would get upset. And that's why I'm sorry I lied to you about it. You not only lied about that, you lied about a lot of other things. And you probably are lying about uh, the cheating also. But now because you copped up to the, the least harmful of it, and you know that Monica is the kind of person who will look for an excuse to forgive you because she loves you so much and mm -hmm. she thinks that there is a future with you and she's so desperate for that future, you know that you can get away with it. Yeah. This is such a manipulative thing for that desi men especially do. Mm -hmm. They know how to do this. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't know enough of these kinds of interaction with other men. But I know that this is an easy manipulative thing for people to do is to cop to the mo the least offensive of the lies. That way, if you're honest about that, you are probably you're giving the impression that you're honest about other stuff. It's yeah. such a political thing. It's like Trump. Trumpism, really. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. And Monica is just foolish enough to fall for it. Mm -hmm. She's Brian, foolish enough yeah. or she's desperate enough. She's like, she's the kind of person who thinks of it as how many months and how many years have I put into this uh, effort? How much effort have I put into this relationship? Do I want to give it away for, give it up for something that I may, 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 if I believe him and if he's true, if this is true, then do I want to give that up? do I want to spoil my relationship because of a lie? Yeah. 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 Brian gets reinvited to Amrit's party, probably because Amrit realized that Brian is like beloved on Bravo. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to yeah. do with anything else. Yeah. This is production saying, Hey, the whole cast needs to be there. Yes. Richa is still not legally married to Vishal and she has a very straightforward conversation with him about um, his drinking and mm -hmm. Crohn's. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that they did this because I was like, Richa can't be this stupid where she just is like, oh, yeah, LOL, no big deal. He's just like my bimbo husband mm -hmm. and he just fucks him. like he's hurting himself and she's yeah. laying down the ultimatum. Right. I kind of find it odd that every one of their serious conversations they have it first thing in the morning when he is making breakfast. Is it because that's the one time that Vishal is most receptive to what Richard is saying? Like Maybe it's the one time that he... in their in yeah. their little kitchen, and he, there's no other way for him to go. There's egg cooking; he cannot move away from the stove, <laughs> and, and Richard literally blocks him into that little space, and then that's when she talks to him. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> it's totally possible. Um, Richa, I also like Richa because when Vishal's like, okay, fine, I won't drink. And she's like, nobody believes this. Yeah. Like literally no one believes that. Like right. don't just say that you're going to do a thing when everyone knows you're not going to do it. So then we. And she literally threatens him like, do you want me to on camera, parenthesis, do you want me to tell people, do you want me to t talk about all the stuff you go through when you have yeah. Crohn's? Yeah. Right. Because it's embarrassing. And he's like, do you want, she's like, I will lay the shit out literally. Literally. If you, yeah. If you do not listen to me, I'm going to tell people how you suffer. And you know that Vishal is the reason he goes out and drinks and does all of that is because he wants to forget that he has Crohn's. Yes. So Richard right. bringing it up over and over again and saying, I will get explicit with your ass if you do not stop. Yeah. I think that is threatening enough for him to say, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. And then we cut to the bachelor party, which like, I'm read this so corny. Who calls their bachelor party, bachelor party 2022? Right? It's the it's worst name in the world. K, K, what is it? Something K squared. K, K squared. Which is fine. K squared is fine, but he keeps calling it. What happens at bachelor, bachelor Party 2022 stays at Bachelor Party 2022. First of all, it doesn't because you're on camera. Secondly, what a long – like, Amrit is just – he's you are so right. He is Wendy Osefo. Yeah. Like, you're not fun. Yeah. You're kind of okay. You're not a you're bad a nerd person. You're a nerd who turned out to be cute and is also on top of it gay. Now you want to play into that also. You want to be the <laughs> cute gay in smart – guy but you also have zero game none of them have game first of all but none. you also have zero game and you have you are so corny 
the way you go about doing it. It's the same like Wendy yourself for getting her boobs done and doing a party for that and making her such a big deal. And nobody was interested. The audience, who's the audience? Your group of friends, they are not interested. What are you doing? Why? It's just too, it's so over the top. Yeah. Uh, Vishal calls Amrit and says he's not coming to the party and Amrit gets all in his feelings about it. But like, here's the thing. Number one, Amrit, you're not interesting enough. Number two, you're not acting hard enough uh, to make us convinced that you really give a shit. And number three, it just it's it's not translating to the camera. I think the way yes. you want because I was yeah, like, it's not working. what's happening? Yeah, is so he mad? He I don't to, understand. First of all, the reason so Amrit is such an he knows Vishal shouldn't be drinking. He That's knows right. Richard yeah. told him not to drink. He knows Richard is refusing to sign the the li- uh, the wedding Marriage uh, license, yeah, wedding license because of this. And he still offered Vishal the bourbon and had him drink. First of all, that's not a good friend. No. Okay? That's not a good friend. You should be trying your heart to make sure that Vishal and Richa's um, relationship works. If Vishal did the same thing for you and that, uh, you know, did something to jeopardize your relationship with... um, Nicholas. Nicholas. I keep saying Adam. (laughs) Uh, that Just would call be him Adam from now on. I'm gonna, yeah, Adam, <laughs> you know, fake Adam. Um, it would still, you would be mad about it, but you are doing the same thing to Richa and Vishal, and you're not seeing that. The reason Richa knows about it is because you blabbed your mouth and you told him, told her, and then you pretend, oh, I shouldn't have told you. Well, what did you expect Richa to do? And then when Vishal says he cannot come, you now spout. And you send a note saying, I do not like you anymore. Like, yeah, what, what are you, two? Yeah, what are you, two? What's wrong with you? Yeah. It's you should be random. like, I understand there's drinking here. You don't want to be around. I understand. I support your relationship. Come tomorrow when there'll be less of that and you can have, I'll have mocktails for you. Yeah. You accommodate the person. If they are important enough for you and it's important that they show up, then you accommodate them a little bit. But he doesn't. He only wants Vishal to be around to bring the la- the life of the party. Yeah, he wanted to be Vishal the life be of the party. Down with the strippers, with the shirt off. Yeah, because even that, like because the next Amrit day, is not capable of doing that. So Amrit he wants not. to have Vishal be the party boy. So he feels that his bachelor party was off the charts. Yes, because Amrit is actually not fine. Amrit and Nicholas are both cannot are not the you know hanging upside down in a speedo kind of boys. So yeah. Yes, exactly. But they know Vishal will do it for them so they can say, they can claim that their bachelor party was off the charts. Yeah. So then Richie comes, Brian comes. The next day they have this 90s party, which is actually an 80s party because, again, Amrit the stupid. Um, And then Vishal, when he does show up, Amrit goes on this whole thing about like, oh, you know, I... um, I, I've always been there for Vishal and I'm, this is my one bachelor party. This is my one bachelor party. It's like, first of all, that's not a guarantee. Secondly, um, like you care again, you care more about how fun your party is than the literal physical health and well being of your oldest friend. Mm hmm. He's like, oh, I went, I was in the hospital with him. Well, then you should know better even more so than right. to push him to do these right. things. Right. It's you very know toxic. that this is horrible. You and even um, Vishal in a in a sober moment there says, "I think I have a drinking problem." Yeah, I feel he has such low self esteem. He's like, "If I'm not drunk and being the life of the party, I feel like nobody would want me." There. That's very sad. It's that is deeply, so deeply sad. Deeply I troubling. felt so sad for Vishal in the moment. Yeah, I mean, Vishal can be a douche when he's drunk, but when he's not. This is where his insecurities come. He's super, super insecure. And instead of building him up and making him feel better, Amrit makes him feel guilty about it. Yeah, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Um, when Bali and Monica and Rishi are there, Bali goes up to them and starts talking to them about all these rumors. And Bali brings up a great point, which is, why are we talking about Brian's feelings and Amrit's feelings when we should all really be talking about how Monica is doing? Mm-hmm. Which I was like, that's a great point, but I almost feel like Monica is, Monica is 
relying on the fact that no one's actually going to care about her feelings and that Brian and Amrith will take over the conversation because Monica doesn't actually really ever want to talk about her own feelings in a way that's real. She, but she also wants others to feel for her. So this yes. is also a way of like when Bali is talking to Rishi and say, look, if any of that is true, any of those rumors are true, then you're a good boy, but bye-bye. We don't want you. We'll, we'll always stand up for our girl, Monica. You can see the joy in Monica's face. She's like, ah, oh, I finally belong to yeah, the girl. they're my the friends. girls are accepting me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Avni and Brian have a very awkward conversation. They make out, and my notes say, I hate this episode of Summer House. <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. Here's the thing. It's are like, people, what, was are it, people, what was it? Was it Paige and Carl? It was Paige and Carl in the pantry. That's the right. Pantry, yeah. Here's the thing. Our people, mm-hmm. we're dorks. We are dorks. We're, Brian is the least dorky person on this show. And there's mm-hmm. a picture that just was out of like Brian, Luke from Summer House, Ashley Darby, and Carl Radke, right? Yeah. Like it's like a group picture. And he's. And, Somehow he he managed to be the dorkiest in the group. Somehow he managed to be the dorkiest. I mean. He he looked like he was dressed for a a comedic movie about golfing. (laughs) It wasn't wasn't even how regular golfers golf. But it was like if it was an old 1990 movie about golf, it was. And this was what you're supposed to wear. Like Happy Gilmore. Yes. he's He was dressed like Don Draper on his day off. Yeah. On a casual day. But yeah, not sexy. giving him a lot of credit. No. But that not sexy. No. no. It, well, he was dressed like Pete from Mad Men. Dressed mm. like Don Draper. Correct. On his day off. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, like when I was watching this and I was watching them all like be drunk and fun and stuff. I was like, this is why brow people like we can't we're not fun in the same way. I get why Vishal needs to get blackout drunk mm-hmm. to come off with some level of fun mm-hmm. because our na- like we are too self-conscious of people to like right. be quote unquote fun. Correct. Correct. We've, we are we've all been Anishas. with a lot of self-conscious biases. Yes. And, um, you know, yeah. I mean, like. Even the even the part where and Rishi is probably the only one that is least self conscious and is actually a player, but he comes off as the as the hey he he seems interesting one because he's not as much of a douche as other people are on Summer House and yeah um, tr- um Southern Charm he's the lower end of that douchiness yeah so p but here he seems to be the more more um, street smart one, whereas the others are like truly dorks. So he, but seems Rishi more- also, Rishi also doesn't have a personality. He doesn't. Not not a single one. Mm-hmm. Not an ounce of a personality. No, no, not, none, no. But it's it's kind of weird. <laughs> the whole scene with Rishi and uh, Brian sitting there and talking about shoe sizes, and then Rishi says. What size shoes do you wear? Is it eight and a half? And Rishi says, well, there goes it. That's settled then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, what was that? Why are you here? Get away from me. Like, no wonder Monica, like, Monica likes the fact that he's, like, kind of a dad who's good looking and I think he mm. has money. Yeah. yeah. That's about it. Like, yeah. I don't know they what's look, fun about Rishi. Monica likes it that they look good. They look so good together. Good yeah. Good together. And the, She's I'm, Monica lives in a Bollywood movie, so she's looking at it as a, po- a Bollywood movie poster. Like, do we look good in the magazine together, standing together, an Instagram post together? That's yeah. all she's looking at. But she, at the end of the day, she wants a commitment. She wants somebody like her dad who dotes on her. And it's that's going to be hard, Monica, to find. That's going to be super hard to find. You're not going to find that. No. And. Not you know, at all. Mm-hmm. That's and for her to be happy, she that's what she wants. Monica, and so she's gonna yeah. get into trouble. She needs to, she needs to get to be a stronger woman and speak up and really dig in deep into her, you know, into her courage, um, you know, pot of courage and try and be that a stronger woman because this is not gonna last and it's only going to end up 
making her very bitter. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this last season when we talked about family karma, which is that like when we met Monica's mom, I was like, oh, this all makes sense. Mm. This makes sense. His, her mom is like the antithesis of her. Mm-hmm. She is like l- – like she's she's more like a Lopa. She's like a yeah. young Lopa. Yeah, she is. So and you could, I, yeah, yeah, and we could see like why Monica like dotes on these aunties and like why she's like always up their butts and everything. Right. And in and in some way, Monica is like Raj more of a wife to Raj than Raj actually mm-hmm. had. Right. So instead, like instead, you know, she just is always like, "Oh my god, my parents, my parents are divorced." Blah blah blah. And it's like, you hate your mother, yeah, because she's not the doting wife that you're you think your dad deserves. Yes. And that is kind of surprising because her dad may want that or may have whatever. It may be stuck in some kind of traditional role that he thinks he needs to play when he doesn't have to. Yeah. But his mother, the dad's mother, seems very progressive. So progressive. And Monica's mother seems very progressive. Yes. So Monica has two very strong women as role models, and somehow she hasn't picked up on that. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't understand that. Well, misogyny is a hell of a drug, uh, mm. and the patriarchy is quite strong. So, yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah. let's take a break, and then we'll be back to talk about Real Housewives of Potomac. And we're back. Okay. Cut to we're back. Cut to you're back. Cut to we're back. <laughs> This episode was – there's a lot more talk this episode than we've had in the last few episodes. Like, I think this episode was the tie-in episode for what's happened so far and what's going to come down the pike. Yeah, a perfect when mid-season. Karen finally wakes up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like Matt needed to come and just like wind up the key in Karen's back. Yeah. And then Karen was like, all right, off I go. <laughs> <laughs> so. Matt. My friend. So, <laughs> so we open up with reasonably shady live show planning. There's well, a lot of planning. We open up with Karen sitting in her sauna. Oh my god, you're right. In a garbage bag, sweating it out, <laughs> sweating all the toxins, <laughs> the Miami toxins out. She's like, oh god, and she's, she's in full wearing- makeup. Full makeup. She's got yes. her best wig on, and I'm like, Karen, why? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, none of it. But so there's a lot of planning. There's Reasonably shady live show planning. Mm-hmm. There's Candace's master's party planning. Mm-hmm. There is, and then there is Karen meeting with Matt, her mm-hmm. friend slash former assistants, slash, assistant slash manager slash accountant slash driver. I don't not, know. Slash friend. not lawyer. Not slash lawyer, best friend. Friend. Very funny that childhood was, friend. Childhood friend. Yeah. She's like, I've known him since. Chaddi Dost. Chaddi Buddy. Chaddi Buddy. We call it Langotia Yar. Langotia Yar. Chaddi Dost <laughs> is what we call it in India. In, <laughs> basically, it means Chaddi is basically what, underwear. what would you call it? Underwear. 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 So, yeah, friends since we were in underwear. Yeah. Friends since, since in diapers. Diaper friends. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's that's funny it that means. she was like, she pointed out that Matt, she's known Matt since he was 17. And I was like, oh, that's an important distinction because mm-hmm. when we met Matt at the the best press conference, conference. Yeah, press conference. Press conference I've ever seen on TV. Right. She was like, oh, yeah, I've known Matt for a decade. And I was mm-hmm. like, wait, are we to believe that at that press con- conference, Matt was 27 years old? But how did 17-year-old Matt, who went to school in Frostburg University, which is in Western Maryland, that's where he went. Uh Uh-huh. So I know this. I don't know why I know this about him. But he went to school there. How did he come come to be in touch with somebody in Southern Maryland, D.C., and get to know Karen? How did this white boy... Growing up in Western Maryland or went to school in Western Maryland, suddenly know Karen. I want to know their background. How did they get to know each other? And if Karen gave him the break into the celebrity world that he wanted to be a fixer, he wanted to be, um, um, you know, he wanted to be a manager. And Karen is the big break he got at the press conference. I feel like I feel like when he was 17. He showed up at Can- 
at a Karen's door selling Cutco knives, and Karen became very close to him. Oh, you think he's maybe he sold the fax machine that Karen bought? <laughs> no, I'm t- he became her knives dealer. Uh-huh. He came, he sold Cutco knives because you know what? If you're in Western Maryland, you're driving to the rich neighborhoods to try mm-hmm. to get them to buy the things right. that they don't need, right. So she he drove all the way to Potomac, That's Maryland. That's the question I would ask Karen at what was that segment called again? Ask Karen. Keeping keep it keeping Karen. Up with, keeping up with keep Karen. Keep it Karen. Keep, keep it Karen. Karen. Keeping it yeah. Karen. Keeping it Karen. Yeah. That's the question. And if if Karen has a live show again, I know she had one and I didn't make it. But if she has one again, I am going. And this is the question. I want to know how she and Matt met. I want to know what the history is behind the relationship because I, I it fascinates me that this white boy of 17 got to know the grand dame at that young age. <laughs> and for s- somehow his career has been shaped by the grand dame. I want to know all of that. It I fascinates it's a fascinating me. Story. It fascinates me. It fascinates me. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah. By the way, so our friend Derek – he tweeted and he said that there is a live show, a Karen live show in February Philly. in Philly. Yes. So I guess do we you want to go? Do you want to meet up it. there? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay. okay. Done. Derek, we are meeting you there. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else who's going to that, we're all going to be there. Okay. Yes. And this time I will not forget my La Dame perfume because I'll remember that it is for her show. Yes. <laughs> Please. I still have to smell it. <laughs> I want to douse myself in no, it. No, you I go don't give need to douse. Hug. You don't I need to douse. douse myself in it and go give her a hug and say, "Sniff me," like Luke t- told us. I'm going to tell her, "Sniff me." <laughs> so Karen is essentially. She says that she and Matt together make magic, which is hilarious. Mm. They're coming up with a live show, and essentially, it is Countess and Friends. Yeah, yeah. It is. If a real life countess who's ex countess can have a show, why can't a fake grand dame have a show? <laughs> it's royalty. It's a royalty and friends show. It's a yes. fake royalty and friends show. This is that's you have a countess, you have a grand dame. What do you have? A duchess? Who's going to be the duchess? Duchess and friends. <laughs> it has to be a duchess in one of the other. Um, I feel like eventually it'll be Lisa Barlow. <gasps> Because of, you know, we always talk about, like, the housewives that we love. I think just- it's going to be, like, Lisa Barlow and Heather are going to come up with live shows, each of them, at the same time. And they're yeah. going to compete. And that's going to be the next storyline. Yes. Heather you know how we always say that there's compete with Lisa. Yeah. There's housewives that are, like, in space. Like, they're not from Earth. Mm-hmm. They're a whole other. Like, they're lovable because yeah, they the are. They're a parallel universe. They're, Yes. It, They're those just women. like a bend in the universe, time-space continuum that just entered into <laughs> our consciousness. They don't belong to this world. They belong to a different time and space. <laughs> those people are like the Countess Luann, mm-hmm. um, obviously Lisa Barlow, and mm-hmm. Karen Huger. Like there's yeah. no one else like these people. No. There's no reality. Like, they're not living in real life. No. They're living in an alternative universe. Yes. It's multiverse we are lucky of madness. We're to have them in our presence. We're, We're lucky. honestly, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, it's a blessing from blessing. God. It's a, it's the eighth miracle. It's the eighth wonder of the world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, all of this, but cut to me spending all of my money on the show. Ugh. I think I will, I will stay at a nice hotel. Yeah. I'll, I'll drive. I, I'll probably drive down. I won't take yeah, a train. I'll probably drive up. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stay at a nice hotel. I will get a nice outfit. Mm-hmm. I will pay for the VIP. Oh, I am definitely doing the VIP for the Grand Dame. No. Why else do I work? Yeah. Exactly. Why else, Why do, else I have... do you podcast? Why else do I have ads in my podcast? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Wendy's got a lot going on on her plate. She went to Chicago and then Chicago? she – Wait, and by the way. she got back, her husband welcomed her with a bouquet of flowers. That's sweet. I never gotten that. My husband comes to pick me up and he is like, okay, let's hurry on. Okay, he but don't even, you think what? don't you think Wendy texted Eddie like you better bring a bouquet of flowers? We're filming. No. Oh, I feel like I think did. this was a this was something that was established way back when in their relationship. 
This was an expectation from Wendy way back when in her relationship. And he's always done it. He's always done it. You know what? That's where I messed up in my marriage. Right? I tried to be a cool girl. Right. I was like, oh, I don't need that. I don't need all that stuff. No. I don't need – I'm not like other girls. I'm a cool girl. I'm not. I'm not yeah. a cool girl at yeah. all. Yeah. I want to be I'm, doted on. Yeah. I, I am going to save that particular clip and show it to my husband. Like next time I come back from some trip, you're going to welcome me with flowers. Yeah. But what the hell? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wendy has kidney stones, and I just wanted to point this out, that it turns out that, like, in the mid-season trailer, in the regular trailer, we saw, like, Wendy, you know, in a stretch or whatever going into Mm -hmm. surgery. I thought it was going to be something much more serious, like her breast implant ruptured. Mm -hmm. But this lady is just going in to get kidney stones removed? (laughs) Come on, Wendy. Well, it's painful, but... I know, but still, it's like, we really... I thought this woman was going to, like, God forbid, have a heart attack or something because she's got so much on her plate, but it's just kidney stones. Mm Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. She's yeah. going to be just fine. She's going to be fine. Poor uh, Mandy doesn't have a storyline this year other no. than the Mia fight. So she should be glad Mia gave her a fight. Yeah, honestly. That's yeah. true. Robin and Candace meet up and they have an extremely emotional conversation. The way it was played, I thought something happened and then they are crying about their friendship. It was about a much more tragic thing that has happened to Robin's hairdressers. Family. Family. Which, for some reason, everybody seems to know. Everybody yeah. seems to be inquiring Robin about, which so I guess everybody knew that woman. Yes. But um, it is tragic. But Robin is like, I'll never get over it. I'm like, okay, but it didn't, yeah, it's two degrees removed. I'm like, I mean, yes. listen, listen. Listen, you might be affected, but you will get over it. Here's the thing. I think that Robin, I think that Robin genuinely has emotions for people. Mm -hmm. She genuinely cares about her relationship with Candace. I think even as much as she can't stand Wendy, I think she genuinely cared about Wendy at some point. And Mm -hmm. Robin is a kind of person where it's easier for her to say, I'm feeling emotions because of this tragedy, rather than her saying, I'm feeling emotions because I genuinely care about these two people. Mm -hmm. So instead, she'll be like, oh, I'm just so emotional over this other thing because that is like a real thing that somebody can look at and say, oh, yeah, a death of a family. That is very sad. Mm. But it's for somebody like Robin, she doesn't have like the emotional and like uh, security Mm -hmm. to actually admit to people that she cares about them and she wants to be with them, you know? Okay. That's giving her a lot of (laughs) credit. But okay. Sure. Can you please move closer to your mic? (laughs) I said, okay, sure. But you know, I went on it's all, a, I went it's all on the a... credit given to Robin's section part of it was like a little uh, okay. <laughs> I went. Well, I went if you're my... going to do that, I'm going to say this. Yes. Um, I think there's a level. There's an extra bit of um, the triangle usage is a little higher this season at inappropriate times. Mm-hmm. And I think it might be because um, um, Candace has been injecting herself with hormones. Oh. So I think the part where she says, I'm so triggered and I'm crying and she just burst out crying. And even with this Robin thing, she could have just hugged and said, I'm so sorry. But she started crying, sobbing. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's too much tears for this situation from you. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. She's been injecting herself with hormones. I can understand her being emotionally charged now. Literally the entire internet. I mean, she didn't need that emotional, that extra catalyst, but I think that is causing her to be a little bit more. Well, so now I, I'm even more appreciative of her control over her emotions in situations. Well, yeah, I think the entire internet was genuinely shocked that Robin and Candace are that close. Everyone mm-hmm. was like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. I think that came after Mon- Mon- Monique and Robin's um, um, Candace's stuff. I think Robin checked on um, Candace a lot. Yes. Um, remember, Candace um, it lives in closer to DC. I don't even know at that point if she was in Maryland. But a lot of the legal stuff had to be done in Maryland. Mm. She had to come over the border to get a lot of that stuff done. And I'm wondering if Robin helped her through a lot of that. 
Maybe. And um, and Robin was calling her and taking checking on her. That's something that she has to- talked about before. I think that's where Candace's loyalty towards Robin comes from, is that when she was really, really down, Robin was the one that she could lean on. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's where she feels like she would have le- leaned more on Karen, but Karen was sitting on the fence as usual, and that was the part that she has to get over in terms of uh, trusting Karen. Yeah, it's very much possible. Yeah. Um, we go to joint chiropractic a DC office opening, and it's me and her family. And essentially what I picked up is that these are – they just open franchises and they convince their – because the producer is asking them about money and like how they pay for mm-hmm. all these different locations. Mm-hmm. And I think what happens is they open franchises and they convince – they like crowdsource from their friends and mm-hmm. family and they convince them to invest into a franchise. Right. I think that's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. There's and I think it's – right behind my office. Is it Mia's yeah. you think? Yeah, it is Mia's. Oh, okay. It is Mia's. Um, it's, well, it's not, it's right not hers there. anymore. Not hers anymore. It's her brother-in-law's now. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they ran into some sort of legal issue or like uh, IRS issue and then they just decided to give the locations to um, – or, you know, maybe they were trying they to buy a house. Different kinds of ownership structures and they got into trouble and yeah. that got and that just got them kicked out because they didn't want – people didn't want them. Yes, or like they were trying to buy a house or something, and the mm-hmm. and mortgage people said, "Well, you have too much debt mm-hmm. between these different locations of your business, so we can't give you a mortgage." And then so they decided to give it to his brother, and then now they don't have anything, which is honestly the most. This is like why I love watching Mia scenes walking around being such a boss CEO boss babe because. She's not a boss to anybody. <laughs> She's so dumb. She's so dumb. <laughs> Ashley has a very emotional visit at Uncle Lump's house. Ugh. Uncle Lump and Auntie Lump are like, Ashley, what are you doing? I know. She does start crying, and that was the first time I felt like Ashley was being super genuine. Yes. She did the ugly cry. This was not Ashley smiling through all of her trouble because Ashley has very she's a very resilient woman in 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 front in in public at least. Yeah. And she doesn't show her emotions. She'll show anger, but she doesn't show her disappointment, sadness. She never shares those. And this was the first time I felt like she was struggling. I think her um in that day, they, she had had a fight and Dean wasn't with her, only DeLuca was. So yes. it was like uh, hard for her. And yes. she gave in to the emotion and she started crying. And I think Auntie Lump was so good. She was, she was, they're giving her good advice, but I don't know if she's going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. I, but it's having also- said all that, you need somebody, you want, you're worried about taking care of the kids and everything. So I don't know how Luke fits into the picture but okay i mean i think luke luke fits in the places where he needs to fit in (laughs) i think that that's i think he's gonna be fitting in just fine Mm. but i do think that like her crying in that moment she is crying about the fact that quote unquote she has to do it all alone Mm -hmm. and her i like that her family's like no we're here for you too but Mm -hmm. i think she's like the thing she can't say on camera is like yeah but you guys don't have any money (laughs) Like, like I need a certain lifestyle and right. that's really what I'm crying right. about. She's like, I don't want, I'm not saying you need to take care of my kids. I want to say, I'm saying that I want to be able to afford a nanny to take care of my kids. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, we have a door and angels birthday party. Oh. Pastor Holy Whore shows up. Let me tell you something about Pastor Holy Whore. Okay. Mm-hmm. This man has been coming up on my Twitter feed and my Instagram feed. So much. All and, of a sudden. Okay. And here's the thing. The shit that he's saying, mm-hmm. I agree with all of it. Yeah. So I'm like, I understand what Giselle was saying. <laughs> like what I understand why Giselle is like so so like such a big fan of Jamal yeah. Bryant and why people why he has such a huge following because he does have great ideals he has he always is on the right side of like political history yeah great ideals um poor morals i don't poor know poor morals yeah but i'm like 
I he wants about- to be a good person. He just yeah. is not able to. Or he wants to do right by the women, but he just is not. So I heard a clip of him on Reasonably Shady because he was uh-huh. a guest on their podcast right. and it was on their Instagram page or whatever. And it was really funny. He was talking about like, you know, the backlash and stuff of like her being on the show and like the mm-hmm. blogs are always. And he was like, he said something like, if you think about the civil rights leaders mm-hmm. of like black people in America who have actually had to fight for our rights, he was like, if I'm afraid of the blogs, then my mm-hmm. life is pretty good. Yeah. He was like, I'm not going to, you know, close down my doors and and lock up because the blogs are coming after me. And I was just yeah. like, God damn it, you charming bastard. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think people like him that are preachers and that are public speakers know what to say. Yeah. They don't necessarily follow through on their own ideas and all their <laughs> own ideals, Right. So uh, they know the right thing to say, just like Wendy in her keynote speak speech, which was apparently mm-hmm. sitting down on a video, uh, kind of like, okay, was it a Zoom meeting? Keynote <laughs> speak? Why, like, why couldn't you do it from here? Why did you have to yeah. fly to Chicago? In any case, um, Wendy says the right things because those are the buzzwords. She knows how to use them. She knows how to use them at the right time. These are public speakers, so they know how to say things, but they don't necessarily follow the same rules. Yeah. They find it just as hard to follow them as their all of their followers who are listening to them. So, mm. Thanks for walking me off that ledge. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you were really worried about me for a second. No, like, I was. Oh, no. <laughs> I was. I was like, uh, back off. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but I thought that the twins party was cute. They, yes. if they are the ones who dressed um, um, Giselle for that event, she looked good. Yes, it was nice. I was like, I wish Giselle would, you know, dress like that more and not like crazy outfits. This yeah. is good, hundred percent. Giselle should lean more into mon- monochromatic outfits. Not too much though, because she has a very monochromatic house, including a white refrigerator. She needs to stay away from big bold prints, though. Yeah. That's true. That's, That's where true. she goes wrong. Yeah. Especially, you know, modern prints. Like yeah. Go for some classic prints. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Candace has her graduation party. It's a little casual backyard barbecue. Candace. How did you manage to do a record and do get another master's and do all of the other stuff that you do? That is a tremendous amount of work that woman put in. And the thing, like I and and get on Instagram live and eat an entire meal while mm-hmm. talking to people for like an hour. Talking shit. Talking and following shit. Following up with more <laughs> shit. She <laughs> has that woman has the most energy. She really does. She and really focus, does. And focus and focus because the executive MBA from Howard is not an easy thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's 40 credits or something. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. She did it during the pandemic and stuff. I think that's when she started. And then she just kept Regardless, going. Regardless. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's amazing that she got that done. Yeah, and she did it all after getting her ass beat on national television. That's like mm-hmm. pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, Giselle comes uninvited to Candace's <laughs> backyard barbecue. I was so proud of Dorothy for calling Giselle a snake. It was so funny. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I did miss Dorothy a little bit, but I think this is the understanding that part of that whole uh, apology was, Dorothy, you will be allowed to come in for one or two scenes if you keep your mouth shut about Chris, and that's the only way we're going to let you come on the show because you are causing more trouble. Yeah. Keep your mouth shut about my husband and keep your pocketbook to yourself. Yes. Um. Karen, uh, everybody shows up. Karen has a conversation with Rob and she asks about a wedding. And then in the confessional, she's like, so you're going to have an intimate wedding with no guests? Okay. <laughs> Karen's lips, you know how she purses her lips and they yeah. just go wobbly, wobbly, wobbly? Yeah. Like uh, um, like a Peanuts cartoon with like <laughs> zigzag wobbly? That's how her lips go. And she went on full wobbly lips when... <laughs> when <laughs> Robin said it's going to be intimate. What did she say? It was an intimate event with four, just the four of us. Isn't just that what the four she of said? Us, yeah. 
Yeah. Four meaning the kids and her and one. And one. That's it? Yeah. So who is the other adult that's going to be the witness? <laughs> Elvis from the White Chapel? <laughs> I don't understand this. Robin. Uh, whoever's at the park that day. Because you know Robin's just going like, to go. Karen's lookalike uh, girlfriend of <laughs> Robin and Wendy also talk. Not even Giselle? Not even Giselle. Listen, Robin seems to be just – this episode, like, Candace had a graduation party that just allowed people to have conversation with each other. So Robin and Wendy talk and they make amends. And it is really nice. And I, I think do- this was, again, another scene where Wendy was the most genuine. She looked good. Yes. She looked more down to her. She came without any of her haughtiness or yes. her arrogance. Yes. She was genuine when she said sorry, even though Robin didn't quite believe her even then. Yes. But again, this was another genuine moment between the two. And then this is, again, a plus for Potomac because they can have the worst fight, but then they'll make up and they'll mean it for at least the next 20 minutes. So they are, this is why this franchise works, right? Yes. That they are able to say sorry and move on. Yes, exactly. Um, Karen and Candace have a conversation again, another sorry and move on. Candace admits that she didn't quite remember what was said. And then when the confessionals are producers like, when did you realize that you said what you said about Karen? Candace is like, a producer told me that I said it. <laughs> which is great but i do think sometimes like there is something that you lose when a producer cleans like mm-hmm. the air for you you know like sets the record straight for you because there is something so fun about a housewife being like on her high horse being like i never said that i never said that and then when the show actually airs they're like oh shit i said it. i think i don't think the producer said that i think Karen, candace finally realized oh wait that conversation did happen and what did I say and it did come back to her but Karen was um what Karen did was I think what Candace might have asked the producer did that scene make it into the cut yeah that's true and when the producer yeah that'll if we filmed it it'll be in there so then Karen just was like well let me clean up now before I go to the reunion yeah so she Ooh. cleaned it up great point. Uh, but Karen is like was Ashley drinking too and she was like, yeah, so you, this was a drunk mess. So Ashley was being messy because she was drunk too. She, mm-hmm. You got drunk and you did the, Karen is like, I'm on top of all of you girls. You don't affect me, but you and I will be cool now because yeah. you said sorry. And I was like, okay, this is the grand dame in action. She doesn't yeah. take, she doesn't take these little things into consideration. She's like, eh, this is part and parcel of the checkbook that I'm going to, the checks that we are going to receive. So this is part and parcel exactly. of the storyline. I'll let it go. Exactly. And so things are going well. Everybody is talking to each other and saying sorry and moving on. So Ray tries a go at mm. it. He goes Ray, up to Ray. Chris. Just before the the Candace speech too, just <laughs> to get Chris all riled up. He tells Chris, listen, maybe you should just go and apologize to Giselle. And Chris brings up a great point, which is Chris and Candace both bring up a great point, which is uh, you're admitting some sort of guilt when you say something like that to a person, which I, I, here's the thing. I think that he's right in saying, like, uh, I'm sorry that you were uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but I didn't do anything to make you uncomfortable. But that is a combative conversation. Right. Like, there's no way that you can have that conversation without somebody getting mad. Correct. And the other Correct. thing is Candace is absolutely right to say, well, we don't know what Giselle is going to say because we've seen this all season when this is played out. Every single and, time Giselle comes yeah. up with some new little nugget of something or another. Right. And, and the, the story the slightly changes. Thing, uh, Chris can do is do it at the reunion in front of Andy Cohen and say, look, I'm sorry you fell somewhere because at that point Giselle will have to accept his um, apology. But if they had a scene, she's going to use that scene to make it into a bigger deal. Exactly. And Giselle is historically at the reunion completely like a s- soft style. kitten. Yeah. Totally silent, doesn't have anything to say. The jabbing and the scheming and the laughing mm. and all that goes away. She's uh, she's totally like right. guards down. 
right. a different person at the reunion than she is. And it was yeah. interesting to hear Chris talk about what it is that she and Ray talk to tell mm -hmm. Chris, tell Ray what she, uh, Giselle and Chris were talking about, which is Chris was trying to say, like, I wish that you guys would understand where my wife is coming from. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. It was, yeah. But Chris so. is all hopped up. I will mm -hmm. say, like, it is messed up of Ray to talk about that at a party for Chris's wife. Like, Ray, come on, man. Why are you stepping into the ring, Ray? Yeah. You weren't even part of this kind of thing. Why? You you, you barely know where you are. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not in Florida. That's yeah. all you know. The, you know what? Matt winded up Karen's uh, key mm -hmm. and then Karen w wound up. Wound up. Ray. Ray's key and then yeah. she sent him on and she was like uh oh we need to reprogram this toy he's pointing in the rock direction Ray waddled over to Chris <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of um, Robin doing uh, do you the other thing the other um, um, theory I had was that Robin is waiting for Bravo to fund her wedding and I'm wondering if Bravo said eh it was exciting a, a last if you had done it last season, but this is two seasons too far, and now no one's interested in your wedding, so we won't fund. We won't, you know, put the bill. That's and possible. So now she's like, ah, then what's the point? I'll just go to the courthouse and get one, and I will sign. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it's but very then, possible. They oh, still Robin, haven't if done you're that. Not getting the big wedding, and it's just a courthouse signature. Why even get married? You used to get. You used to well, it's like what Karen like said. It's like if you want to just shack up with your husband because you don't want to be married again, that's fine. That's fine. But yeah. you're making it my business by bringing this up on my television, our television show, where we're all right. supposed to talk about what's going on in our lives. Yeah. Well, um, that's it for this episode. Uh, it was a good episode. I thought a lot of loose ends were tied and new yeah. groundwork was laid for new alliances and friendships. I'm excited next week because Giselle and Karen are going to sit together and talk shit about a person no one cares about, which is Mia and Jacqueline. And I love that the most. Yeah. Um, I saw a preview of that scene where Giselle and Karen sit together and talk. And it doesn't matter what they say about Jacqueline and Mia, but – Karen is trying to explain to Giselle what her live what's going to happen on her live show, mm. and just Karen says something like, "Well, there's going to be a lot of things for us to talk about. There's going to be sizzle topics." <laughs> Giselle's like sizzle topics. She's like, "Yep, sizzle yep. topics, bacon." <laughs> I'm like what? What are we sizzling? <laughs> yeah, is it bacon? Is yeah. it onions? <laughs> is it sizzlers? What is it? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, it's going to be a proper outback steakhouse, you know, appetizer. <laughs> appetizer Sizzle tray. There's going she to be an say, onion, blooming onion coming through. <laughs> she did say that she wants to have dinner <laughs> at her live shows, like a snack, a filet mignon. I don't know what she was saying, but she talked a lot about food. Uh -oh. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, it's Sizzle Topics. <laughs> Karen just says things and... Oh, no. Arthi, where did you go? I'm here. Oh, okay. What happened? I don't know. It just froze. Oh, okay, Did you great. get everything? No, I did. It's still recording. Okay. Okay, but okay. I said it, it would be funny if it, like, it's just Karen up on stage. They just bring up little sizzler trays of things. She did say there would be noshing. Yes. Some, yeah. I, exactly. I'm expecting finger foods at your event, Karen, in Philadelphia. <laughs> Karen, if you're listening. There better, and there better be something vegetarian for me. Yes. So, yeah, I'm going to write to her and make sure that she has some vegetarian finger foods for me. And I don't mean cauliflower <laughs> or broccoli bites. <laughs> you know what? I'll bring my own. 